Nick Carver here for the final video presentation from this free preview of my Adobe Lightroom online course. This is just one of 37 videos on this course, totaling four and a half hours of video instruction. And this is in addition to the eight weekly lesson guides composing 252 pages of written material to cover every last square inch of Adobe Lightroom. We go over everything from image import to export, file management, collections, folders, uh, image adjustment, advanced image adjustment, using brushes to enhance your pictures, and most importantly, we go over how to set up a super clean, super simple workflow in Adobe Lightroom to minimize your editing time and maximize your results. Be sure to head over to my website to download the free lesson guide, one of eight, to see what the written materials are like. If you like what you see here and you like what you read, I hope to see you as a student on the Adobe Lightroom online course. So here we are to look at the basic panel in the develop module. Now the basic panel contains all your most basic adjustments. Imagine that. Wonder how they came up with the name. So all these basic adjustments are important adjustments. Don't mistake basic with not advanced. Basic just means they're really important for pretty much every picture you take. They're kind of the fundamentals, the core, the foundation of image adjustments that you make. So starting up at the very top, we have color and black and white. Now if it's on color, the picture will be color, black and white, it converts to black and white. But let's just stick with color for now. We're actually gonna go over a more advanced way to convert to black and white later on that's gonna create better results. So on color, first and foremost, we have white balance. Now right here, I have the same picture both as a RAW and a JPEG, and on both of them, the white balance was set incorrectly. So here it's a tungsten white balance setting when it should have been something more like daylight or cloudy. So on the left here we have a RAW file, on the right we have a JPEG. Now you'll see they look identical, again RAW versus JPEG. But I'm going to show you how different the white balance adjustment is on a JPEG file versus a RAW file. So let's start with the RAW file. So here's the RAW and to get rid of this blue cast, it's quite simple. I can just choose a white balance preset right here, like daylight. See if I like that, and then I can maybe try cloudy if I want to try something a little different. Or I can simply drag the sliders around. If it's real blue like this, I just drag the slider back towards yellow, and the colors balance and look natural. Let's try that same thing on the JPEG. So the JPEG here, there's too much blue, so first off, my white balance presets are gone. And that's because it's a JPEG file. They weren't recorded to begin with. So if I go to temperature and just try and add yellow, it kind of eliminates the blue, but it's not quite the same quality. The colors shift to a weird uh, hue. The whites go out too white, they blow out. I start to get too much purple here, so I can drag the, temp the tint back to green to try and get rid of that, but it never looks quite the same as doing the white balance on the original RAW file. So that's why if you want to mess with the white balance sliders later, make sure you're shooting RAW. It's not the same doing it on a JPEG. Now there's another way I can adjust the white balance here. Let me throw this white balance off again so we can give it a try. I can adjust the white balance using this little eyedropper tool. This is the white balance selector tool, shortcut is W. If I click that and bring it out onto the picture, it tells me to pick a target neutral. So I need to click on something that's supposed to be neutral toned, something white, black, gray. I'm gonna try the snow. And when I do that, the white balance is automatically adjusted to make that color neutral. So it's a real quick way, if your picture happens to have a neutral in it, you can click on it and everything gets adjusted. As we move down, we have exposure. This one's pretty straightforward. I bring it down, the picture gets darker. I bring it up, the picture gets lighter. Now be aware that adjusting exposure in Lightroom is not the same as doing it in the camera. You'll get better results in the camera if you do it there. If you bring the exposure too high in Lightroom, it'll introduce noise, especially in the shadows. So you'll see like the trees here, they start to look kind of noisy. They have grain all over the place and that's because I brought the exposure too high. Even on a raw file, I still get that noise. Um, but if you need to make minor tweaks to the exposure, uh, then go ahead and adjust that exposure slider after you've taken the shot. I'm gonna go ahead and double click it to reset. Then there's the contrast slider. If I bring the contrast slider to the right, contrast is increased. 
If I bring it down to the left, contrast is decreased. Higher contrast means the shadows are darker and the highlights are lighter. You can see that here. Lower contrast means the shadows are lighter and the highlights are darker. So in other words, the gap between bright and dark is not as great. But when the contrast is up, the gap between bright and dark is huge. I'm going to double click that again. Below contrast, we have highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. This is basically similar to contrast, except with more control. So for instance, if I take the highlights up, the highlights get lighter. In this case, it's the snow and the sky. If I bring it down, the highlights get darker. This is a great way to recover detail from uh, highlights that are blown out. If they're blown out really too much, you can't recover anything, but if they're just blown out a little bit on a raw file, you can oftentimes recover detail by bringing the highlight slider down. So oftentimes I'll bring the highlights up a little bit just to brighten the light tones. Then you have shadows. If I bring shadows down, the shadows get darker. If I bring it up, the shadows get lighter. You'll see, especially around the cliff here, it gets a lot lighter when I bring the shadows up. And I might lighten them up a little bit just to pull out some detail from that cliff. Whites are the extreme highlights, the really, really bright tones. If I bring that up, they get brighter. If I bring it down, they get darker. I'm going to bring those up a little bit just to whiten the, the ultra bright parts of the snow just a little bit. If I do blacks here, I bring blacks down. If I bring it up, blacks get lighter. And again, the blacks are just the extreme darks. So I can make the really, really dark darks darker. Or I can make the really dark darks lighter. I can reset that back to zero if I want. So I would just fine tune these until I got the look I wanted. I tend to like really rich black tones, so I usually bring the blacks down a little bit. And the shadows I oftentimes bring down too, unless I'm trying to recover detail from some shadows. Then that brings us to presence. Now with presence, we first have clarity. Clarity is a difficult tool to describe, as I mentioned in the lesson guide, because it kind of just does what it does. If you bring it up, it appears to add contrast and bring out details. If you bring it down, it gets the picture softer and the details start to kind of fuzz out. So bringing it up can add a little bit extra pop to your landscapes and close-ups and cityscapes. But don't go nuts with it, because if you go too high, it just really looks over Lightroomed. It looks too edited. You'll see here, it's got that really harsh look that almost like, looks like an HDR photo. Um, but don't go too crazy with it. Don't be afraid to use it, though. Just try not to, try to have a light touch. So I'm going to bring that up just a little. Vibrance uh, and saturation are very similar. We're going to start with saturation. So as we talked about in the lesson guide, bringing up saturation brings up all colors equally they'll all get more colorful. So as I bring this up, you'll see that the sky and El Capitan back there all get boosted in color. So do the rocks down here. Again, let me show you that. I'll reset it to zero. Bringing it up, all the colors get more vibrant. So that's saturation. That one's pretty straightforward. It boosts all colors equally. Vibrance is a little different. What it does is it will boost the muted colors first to try and get them up to the level of the already saturated colors. And then once they're up to the same level, it'll kind of boost them all equally. And it also won't really touch skin tones. So colors more in the red channel, it won't touch so much. So watch, I'm gonna bring vibrance up and you'll see the blue in the sky gets affected much more than the rocks do. If I bring it down, you'll see the blue in the sky disappears, but there's still some slight color in the rocks. Um, especially like right around here. You'll see the blue in the sky is gone, but the color in the rocks are still there. That means it's not really touching the color in the rocks. So again, I bring it up, the blue gets more vibrant, but I don't get the oversaturated look on the, uh, the rocks. So the way I use vibrance and saturation varies picture to picture, but oftentimes what I'll do is bring up vibrance first to get the muted colors up to where they need to be. And then I'll bring saturation up a little bit afterwards to bring them all up together. But I don't want to overdo it on either one of these, otherwise it kind of starts to look like a cartoon. So with this picture here, uh, now that I've boosted colors, I see that the white balance looks a little too yellow for me. So I'm going to go back and just bring the slider back down to blue, just to give it a little bit of coolness back. And remember with backslash, I can see before and after. 
So I click backslash, there's before, there's after. So you see the sliders really brought out a fair amount of detail in the shadows. The clarity enhanced the, the various details and the colors are definitely a lot richer. But remember, this is a raw file. Raw files need all this work because raw files are inherently low in contrast and low in color. So let's go look at another picture here. We're gonna do this uh, portrait again here. And this is a JPEG, so I can't actually really adjust the white balance much. Luckily, I was paying close attention to it at the time, so it's actually pretty spot on. But the first thing I'm gonna do is bring up the exposure just a tad. It's a little darker than I want, but I'm not gonna go nuts. Um, I'm going to bring up the highlights a little bit because that'll bring out her skin just a tad more. I'm gonna bring up the whites a little bit because I find that increasing the whites can give the picture a little more contrast and a little more interest. Uh, I'm gonna try the shadows down to richen up the shadows and then I might try it up to see if it's better with the shadows up. I think it starts to look a little too flat with the shadows up, so I'm probably not gonna to touch those too much. I'm just gonna bring them down a slight bit. I'm gonna try the blacks down real low and then I'll try them real high. That's richening up the color of her hair or it's making it darker anyway. But I don't wanna to go too much, so I'm gonna not mess with that too much. I'm just gonna bring it up slightly because I wanna get, I don't wanna lose detail in those shadows too much. Clarity, I'm gonna bring up just a tiny bit, but not much. Uh, you really don't wanna to go too high with clarity on portraits because it starts to make skin look real bad. Vibrance, I'm gonna bring up, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna enhance the red of her dress, but not really touch her skin tones. Um, and you'll see, if I do saturation instead, her skin shifts to kind of an ugly yellow color, but Vibrance, if I bring that up, I can bring it up all the way and it barely touches her skin. So that's the nice thing about Vibrance when you're doing portraits is it brings up the colors of everything except skin tone. So I'll do before and after. You'll see it's mostly just a little bit brighter and a little more contrasty. Let's do one more here. All right, so looking at this shot, this is a raw file, so I can adjust the white balance. Uh, I think it looks good now, but I may come back and change it. The first thing I'm gonna do is bring up the highlights. I don't think the exposure needs any touching because uh, I got the exposure pretty good, but I wanna bring up the highlights. I'm gonna bring up the whites a little bit, and this is just to brighten up that ocean surface a tad. Then I'm gonna bring shadows down just slightly to richen up those clouds. I'm gonna bring blacks down just a little bit to richen up the sand and the clouds a little bit further. Now I need to bring up the colors. So first I'm gonna bring up vibrance. And that'll bring up the more muted tones first, which is probably gonna be more the clouds, and it won't touch the orange quite as much. Once I have them up where they're kind of equalized, then I'll bring saturation up to bring them all up together. Okay, and now that I've done that, I see that the white balance isn't quite what I want it to be. I want it to be a little more yellow. So I'm gonna drag it towards yellow just a bit, bring up some warmth. I'm gonna add a little bit of magenta too. Not too much though. Okay, so here's before and here's after. Again, I have to boost the colors quite a bit because it's a raw file. Don't be afraid to boost colors quite a bit on your raw files because remember, they're inherently low in color. You gotta bring that up. Uh, after looking at it with the colors boosted, I may decide to tone them back down a little bit because I'm looking at the wave over here and I see that it's just kind of purplish. So I'm gonna bring them back down just a tad. I don't wanna go overboard here. Um, and I'll just fine tune these back and forth until I get the look I want. I may bring the exposure up a tad now that I see it. Bring the blacks back down. And I think that's looking pretty good. So there's no right answer on any of these. Do whatever you want. Just make it look how you want it to look. My only words of warning is uh, don't go too heavy on any one of these because it tends to make the picture look a little too processed. And a lot of times it introduces digital noise, especially when you bring up the shadows really high or bring up the blacks really high. Uh, noise just starts to show up so much in the shadows that it, it just doesn't look good quality anymore. Even if you're shooting at ISO 100, if you're bringing up those shadows like crazy, noise starts to show up. So that's the basic panel. You're gonna be touching that basic panel on pretty much every picture you adjust. It's the first stop in your uh, adjustments. That's why it's right up at the top. But head on back to the weekly lesson guide. Finish up that lesson guide. I got an assignment for you. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.